don't know where you're running to. You know you don't need to worry. The world is turning to come to you. There's no reason to hurry. Hello. Hi everyone. Welcome to uh, Monday Neuroscience Talks. This is our second talk in 2021. We talked about nostalgia last time and uh, today we're going to talk about mob mentality. All right. Everyone welcome, welcome. You know who, Miss Nonchalant, uh, Phoenix Abhishek, uh, Utkrisht, uh, Shreya Anshit Srivastav. Welcome. I hope that I'm audible. I hope I'm visible. Uh, yesterday, after yesterday's gaming stream, I'm getting a little bit of paranoia about audio issues, but I hope that uh, that is not the case today. Miss Nonchalant, hello, Sid. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. How are you guys doing? Kya hal hai? How has 2021 been treating you so far? Kunal BBX, hi. Hi, Kunal. Divyansh, Lavina, welcome. Mob mentality akele akele. <laughs> AV is good. Thank you. That's great to hear. Mob mentality akele akele karna is actually, uh, that's true. That's not actually fair, but uh, we can't really have a discussion on mob mentality in a mob. As you will soon see, it's not going to happen. Uh, Dr. Siddhi Mahmood, hi. Meh, yeah. Prakar and Varun will be joining us on Wednesday. We are going to have a discussion on evolution. So trifecta of reality part three, if we'll count the gaming one, then uh, we are going to have, we are going to talk about uh, evolution on Wednesday. All right, how are you guys doing? What have you been up to? What is, uh, what is going on? And what do you think about uh, mob mentality? I already made that joke. You know who? I think you've made all jokes. I don't think uh, there's anything left for the rest of us. Unfortunately. <clears throat> Start the neuro part, please. Okay. Tell me about mob mentality. What is... What do you think this is? Right, let me start the iPad. Yeah. Let's talk about mob mentality. Both mob and big tech are too scary. Uh, following the herd, okay? All right, let's talk about it. When we as individuals go around, talk about ourselves, we think about what we want to do, we think about our personality, our identity, we have our own likes and dislikes. If I ask any one of you who you are and what you want to do, you will be telling me about you, you'll be telling me your life story. What happens in a group? What happens when that same you is now part of a big group? There is a change that happens in your brain. There is a change that happens in your personality and the way you think changes. So that is what we are discussing today. We are thinking about what happens when an individual goes from being just an individual to being a part of a bigger circle, a bigger group. And what are the changes that happen? 
from one dog all the dogs bark yes that's true that is a uh, part of what we are going to talk about uh, releasing the tribal instincts low logic collective uh, intelligence of a mob is far lesser than individuals fear of standing out okay so fear of standing out uh, is a little different but the rest of it yes bhav bhav op okay uh phoenix abhishek i was there that day uh, at the elfinston wow okay people who don't have critical thinking have mob mentality so what we'll be seeing today is that almost anybody is capable of being part of the mob so that is one really important thing that as a person you can't really predict what that person will be like in a mob so we will be covering that uh, cause a social validation fitting in all right when i say mob mentality i we are also talking of herd mentality so both of these terms are interchangeable they are both used um, sometimes you use the herd word herd mentality sometimes you use mob and the idea is that you act together so you act in a group okay so there are two forms of acting when you do something you can either act individually so this is just you acting out of your own conscience out of your own logic and you're acting uh, using just your brain or you act as a group now there are many forms of acting as a group if you are working in a corporate if you're working as a team you are acting as a group but in a group there are two ways of thinking one is if there is a centralized thought process or if there is no centralized thought process so no centralized decision making and when there is a centralized decision making that is the ones that we are uh, usually dealing with in in the form of government or in the form of corporate or in the top in the form of a uh, cricket team so in a cricket team there are there is a hierarchy the captain will tell the vice captain or the coach will tell the captain that there is a hierarchy of decision making and everybody will still know what their role is but there is still a centralized form of thinking what happens when there is no centralized decision making but you are still acting as a group this is where herd mentality comes in where the decisions are taken collectively and it is actually the uh, most perfect example of democracy where as a group you come together and you decide uh, what should your action be what should your thought process be so your thinking itself is decided as a group without centralized decision making now this is common it's not that this happens just in human beings this is common across the spectrum so if you look at evolution and you should look at evolution you should look at evolution all the time right from the start till today so if this is humans and we are assuming that we are the most evolved on earth we are not sure of that but uh, right from say fishes to birds to animals uh insects all across all across the evolutionary spectrum we have seen herd mentality it has been a constant so fishes move in a i think is called a school of fishes um when you see birds flocking together the phrase is that birds of a feather flock together there is uh animals hunting in a pack or animals escaping from a predator as a group you've seen those national geography or uh, discovery channel videos where there are hyenas uh, hunting in a pack or those groups of buffaloes running away from a lion and they then the lion will wait for one of them to escape from the group and then chase after that one guy and the rest of them will escape so the idea of moving together in a pack has been uh, present from the beginning of evolution 
why what is the big deal why should this be such a strong evolutionary trait the simplest explanation is safety there is safety in numbers so whenever you are traveling together you are safer as opposed to when you're traveling alone now what about humans when we evolved from monkeys from apes we we had a lot of migrating to do so we actually migrated out of africa all across the world and uh, we went uh, we traveled so much and there is no way that we could have traveled and we could have survived if all of us were traveling by ourselves so if i tell you that you have to go, uh, travel all the way to europe hitchhike all the way to europe by yourself in prehistoric times you wouldn't have survived but the reason that you survived is because there is safety in numbers so you traveled together and that is when tribes happened so the tribal culture the tribal the community that took place because we wanted to travel from uh, across continents in fact now from that point later on uh, we developed farming agriculture and that traveling stopped and we settled down now after we settled down we realized that the advantages of the tribe still hold because now when you have settled down in one place if it is just one person or if it's just two people and a kid then they are under constant threat from everyone else so then you decide that you want to club it with different families and all these families come together and say that we will now form a village or we will form a tribe and now inside this village we will all protect each other we will all help each other and so for any external threat and every one of us can come together to repel that threat and so this became one of the most important parameter of safety it wasn't money it wasn't uh, anything else it was just can you stay together that decides whether you survive or whether you die then automatically that that becomes the most important thing so whatever is keeping you alive will automatically become the most important thing so this ultimately led to social validation as the predominant factor so the main factor the main factor in uh, your thinking in your uh, how to live your life becomes social validation will my tribe accept me okay so this is mob psychology yes um this is uh, this is tribe psychology and this is where it came from that uh, you want to survive and this is also why this fear of social rejection comes in because think about what social rejection means in the prehistoric times that if your tribe decides for whatever reason that uh, if there are 100 people in the tribe and there is you and for whatever reason the tribe decides that you are not fit to be part of the tribe so you go out and the rest of them will continue traveling or will continue surviving inside the village then the chances of you surviving are drastically reduced because now you will have to hunt alone you will have to protect yourself alone you will have to uh, make sure that no animal comes and attacks you and what about your family what about your kids can you take care of everybody by yourself if you are a woman uh, can you take care of the child and the husband by yourself no you need a tribe to ensure that you are alive your survival depends on it right and this fear of social rejection doesn't really go away because it has been there for so long for so so long that our core thinking our 
most primitive ways of functioning are built on top of this uh, basement it is built on top of this foundation so this is why forming of groups became a core human trait even more so than other animals a core human trait and this is seen across all spectrum so now tell me where all can you find groups think about our society today so in 2021 forget about prehistoric times in 2021 tell me where all can you find groups when you think about it kaha kaha pe groups hote hai alpha males resistant to mob mentality absolutely not <clears throat> do you think blockchain is the logical apex of mob psych mm. blockchain ha is an interesting concept uh, we will talk about it so blockchain is sort of reversing it's decentralizing of it whatsapp yes uh, social media yes left right political spectrum yes school discord yes religion religious organization audience yes concerts uh, school offices music community tribal brilliant lgbtq community sure political yes mm. if you are to think of our normal society our healthy society you can say all these things so you can talk of religion uh, you can talk of uh, sports so all our clubs so man united fans huge group chelsea fans huge group barcelona fans huge group C indian cricket fans huge group these are a group uh, religious gathering hindus muslims huge group countries uh, all the indians will gather all the uh, brazilians should gather so that's a huge group uh, families so even so now with nuclear families smaller groups but earlier on with joint families a family is a huge group and there are families that ha that other families will worry about attacking or threatening because of the size of the family or because of the connections of the family and those are also groups the other side of it is the violent side which is there are groups in riots there are groups in protests <coughs> there are groups in all demonstrations <laughs> anti-vaxxers flat earthers yes they are all groups and um, and i think yeah sanjeev kumar just said it right what it what you can summarize this with is there is a sense of belonging terrorists lynching group absolutely everywhere there is a sense of belonging and uh, that sense of belonging is so strong that it is what keeps these groups together now let us draw this in a slightly different way and really visualize what goes into the making of a group because if you think about it we are all individuals apna apna we are all our own self we all have our own thinking our own name our own identity and that's it but somewhere we have an exchange of ideas and this is where language comes in right in evolution at some point there was an exchange of ideas between human beings and so these two people their own people individual people started talking to each other exchange of ideas give and take and they found a common ground and sometimes this common ground is very easy to identify uh, it could be the skin uh, the color of your skin or it could be the way you talk or it could be your gender or it could be the whichever god you say you believe in sometimes it's very obvious sometimes it takes a little bit more of communication sometimes you have to go a little bit deeper but if there is enough communication 
and give and take of information you come across a common ground and now this also happens with these two and these two and these two and these two right and the more communication there is between these different individual people depending on the complexity of language also so two birds can say exchange only oh god i realize that um, after the tiger now there will be bird um, bird jokes wait let me draw bird properly okay okay is that a bird cool i mean that can be a bird uh, <laughs> if there are two birds and they are both talking to each other and there is a there is a limitation to the amount of information that they can exchange because of the limitation of their language but in human beings because language has uh, evolved the amount of information they can exchange is much more and so the kind of groups that they can form is much more because the common grounds that they can form is much more the common ground isn't something that is biological it is also something that is created so for example the color of your skin uh, it's something that you can see but religion is not something you can see caste is not something you can see these are created things we have created them out of nothing and then used that as a factor in creating a common ground and that's great common grounds are great because without common grounds there is no communication there is no working together there is no harmony so uh, probably because we lacked enough common grounds we had to create them it wasn't enough to say that we are all human beings wo to pata hai but still human beings were killing each other so how do we create more common grounds so religion caste all of these are examples of creating common grounds now because of language complexity as language keeps evolving uh, we communicate we create common grounds we form new connection patterns and we form more and more complex connections so the initial connections can be all just um, we are brother and sister uh, you are husband and wife you are mother and father uh, so on as we as a complexity of our language increases the complexity of these connection patterns also increase so now you have uh, best friends or you have friends you have best friends you have um, you have co-workers you have colleagues uh, you have uh, somebody from your opposite team you have um, all sorts of across the social spectrum romantic relationships across that romantic relationship spectrum we have so many names for different uh, shade of relationship because of the complexity of our language what does this have to do with uh, herd mentality or mob mentality because it is this complexity of language that decides how this group behaves okay now this is very very important and this is probably the this is probably the most important aspect of this um, talk the complexity of your language or the complexity of the information that you are sharing determines the behavior of the mob okay or group determines the behavior of the group what does that mean if your language is limited you can only convey limited information for example that guy bad this guy good that god good this god bad this food is good this food is bad this is binary this is very simple this is easy to convey information even animals can convey it by uh, showing affection towards one uh, thing and hate towards another thing this is simple to understand and if your language is only evolved enough to convey this much then the group will also behave in a binary it will be going yes let us 
let us increase the worth of this thing and let us completely reduce the worth of another thing because that is how the language has been conveyed the more the more uh, complex your language becomes the more subtle the information can get or the more shades of information you can uh, convey but this is a double edged sword because the more complex the information gets the more time it takes for people to process it and the more uh, complex your language need to become so everybody needs to be on the same page so usually our bottom line is binary yes no i want this i don't want this that is a simple thing that is what everybody understands and so this is why most crowds or most mobs have a binary way of looking at things because that is the baseline we will be discussing this a little bit more uh, further ahead all right so till now till now are we are we on the same page is is my language um, syncing with your language are we connecting do we have a connection pattern here uh tell me because this is a group what we have right now there are what 111 people watching all of you at your on your uh, screens at your homes connected through the internet and uh, we are all connected through language and you are seeing me you're hearing me and uh, your brains are taking this information and finding common grounds that is what is happening whatever i am saying you are shifting through that information and maybe out of 100% you will take 60% or 70% or 100% or 0% and depending on that you will find a common ground and that is where we will stand and that is where we will build and this is how it um this is how all groups work yes we are connecting with that bird oh god i'm going to regret that bird aren't i um subscribe the channel if you want to invest rather than <laughs> waste your time uh subscribe baba ki kamal what okay all right 89% feeling the connection okay excellent now let your mob is with you so far <laughs> uh now let's talk of mob behavior how does a mob behave think about this if you were in a theater okay so this is a movie theater and uh say there are uh, four exits or say there are two exits and it's filled with people right and now say there is a crisis say there is a fire okay what they have found is that logically equal number of people should head to different exits because that is how everybody can get out safely but somehow for some reason what happens is majority of the people will head to one exit and a minority will head to the other right and what happens here in this space when say 90% of the people have come to this one exit what are the things that happen in this space so this is also called as escape panic you want to suddenly you want to suddenly get out um your brain is threatened there is an imminent danger of death and you want to escape your life is in danger so this is escape panic and 90% will head to this exit what will happen what is happening here at this exit stampede yes somebody said stampede so when when you say stampede you can imagine it you can imagine people rushing together so if this is the exit instead of everybody walking out one by one and escaping 
what is ha going to happen is everybody is going to crowd here right and they'll be shoving and pushing and everybody is trying to get out here what will happen is some people will fall so there will be obstacles people are going to fall tumble if one person is trying to escape and the other person is also trying to escape do you think that these two people uh, do you think that these two people will be talking to each other do you think they will be saying excuse me or do you think they'll be saying uh, can I go first usually what is going to happen is language devolves now what does this mean what is what does language devolving mean words stop mattering words become less important and you go from words down to physical action so which is pushing shoving you pull people out you you try to hit them uh, there is more of a uh, there is more violence and the reason is this language devolving it will go from more complex to less complex and now if you look at that uh, diagram we drew of evolution and I remember telling you that you should always look at evolution basically what happens is when you are threatened you go from here to here so when you are threatened when you are in that escape panic your all the things that have been evolving in the last say 10,000 years slowly start going backwards and the language that has evolved recently your sense of how to behave in society all of those things start going backwards because threat fear of death is something that even fishes knew birds knew animals knew so they knew how to deal with that they didn't know how to deal with social niceties so that is something that has developed very recently so when fear of death comes in you devolve you go back okay now another thing that happens is when you are facing escape panic the number of choices that you see go down so why why is it that 90% of the people can only see one uh, one exit they can't see the other exit or they may not even look for if there is a third exit somewhere because the number of choices that you see go down and the first exit that you see is the only exit that you see because now your brain doesn't have the processing power to still take in more information your brain says enough I have seen enough I have already taken in as much information as I need to know there is a fire there is an exit what else can you tell me what are you going to tell me that is more important fire exit that's it that's all I want to know I don't want to look for a fire extinguisher I don't want to think about how that fire is not going to spread or I don't want to think about how to solve the fire I need to get out and the first exit that you see is the only exit that you see then what happens is there is more of copy behavior so when you look at exits and you see two people jumping for one exit your brain is saying these are members of my species they are heading for an exit I don't need to think anymore because I will trust their decision they are also in that same escape panic as I am so whatever is going to save them is also going to save me right and this is copy behavior so when if there are two exits and each person if they were individually asked in if there is no fire each person will have the logical sense 
to look around and see that okay there is one exit here there is one exit here oh there is also an exit here i can just go here even if this person is sitting here i can just escape from here and this is all logical but as soon as there is a fire and this person this person sees this person running here this person cannot think he will also run all the way here because of these things there is decreased choices and there is copy behavior right and the reason is that this these are all the effects of fear and we will talk about amygdala in a bit but basically fear reduces your uh, field of vision uh, fear reduces your choice making uh, and fear reduces your rational thinking right now i gave the example of uh, a theater and a fire but this can be seen this phenomenon can be seen everywhere so this can be seen in a stock market when the stock market crashes that is the economic equivalent of fire in the theater where you are all sitting you are all um, watching a movie and suddenly the stock market crashes it's done you are going to die that is what your brain says and what happens you will either go for the nearest exit that you find which is either sell everything or whatever or you will look at the person closest to you what are they doing you will call up your friends kya karna hai tu kya kar raha hai bech raha hai acha chalo main bhi bechta hu acha rakh raha hai acha theek hai main bhi rakhta it is you will always go for copy behavior and reduce choices the the decision making that you will have when there is no stock market crash is not the decision making that you will have when there is a stock market crash and uh, yeah what are, what where else can you see this this you can see in all crowds um, any festival mela you can also see it in brands and it's not always a negative thing or a positive thing if everybody is buying something you will also want to buy something if everybody is boycotting something you may also want to boycott something the idea of sudden threat and the idea of copying and the idea of reduced choice perception is universal now <clears throat> uh, let's go a little bit deeper into how the how the mob is formed right <clears throat> this is you just you individual person one person you meet someone else right so now this is i and you so this is me and this is you two people we start communicating like i said language exchange of communication and if we work together great if we don't work together there is some animosity it becomes i versus you here in a very primitive way all those things happen i get threatened you get threatened i get angry you get angry we have exchange of in, uh, words we might even go into violence throughout this story my brain is still calculating as me and you are still calculating as you so my personality also matters my upbringing also matters my my morals also matter my belief system also matter all of that happens because it is still me talking and even if i like you or if i hate you it is still me who is liking or me who is disliking me who is hating right now what happens 
suppose it's not just me suppose instead of me there are many of us so there's a whole family or there's a whole group say these are all my friends and instead of just you you also have a group so here instead of me versus you it becomes what does it become guys what does it become now becomes us versus them yeah you know so now it becomes us versus them which is on the face of it it seems very similar to me versus you because it's just argument it is just anger it is hate i hating you how is that different from us hating all of you why should it be any different but what happens is that here all the principles that i spoke about um over here in terms of language and communication and complexity of uh, information exchange this is what forms a group all these principles now start applying to both of these groups so the complexity of information exchange between all these guys and the complexity of information exchange between all these guys will have an effect in deciding what this whole group now behaves as so the blue group and the red group will now behave as one unit so the blue group is now one unit and the red group is now one unit and the how that unit behaves depends on the complexity of information exchanged between the group members okay uh take a second off let me see what chart is up to what are you guys talking about tesla stock is high because of mob mentality elon musk very nicely put i'm glad that you came out and said it republicans versus democrats aditya sharma absolutely any two groups any two groups work in um, in this way <clears throat> and here what happens is because the communication between a group depends on language and whenever there is devolution of language that communication breaks down but the group doesn't disappear it is that the communication breaks down it becomes more binary so that language simplifies and all of these things now when you look at personality upbringing morals beliefs these are all complex ideas because think about it when you say that you are someone who believes in justice okay now think about what justice means justice is when you feel that when you have done something there has to be a gen there has to be an equal uh, outcome and that justice has to be weighed against all the complexities of the world what is justice it is a complicated concept if you say you want equality what is equality it is a complicated concept you have to have the kind of language to discuss it when language evolves complex ideas stop so as complex uh, as language devolves the complexity of ideas reduce and justice becomes binary equality becomes binary uh, your morals become binary everything becomes yes or no and very easy to accept very easy to reject and so whereas one person so this was me 
and I had very complex, complicated ideas because as a human being, we all do. Not a single one of you is a simple human being. It's not possible because your brain is a whirlpool of ideas. Your brain has so many threads, so many roads, so many interconnected thoughts that you haven't explored, that you haven't thought about. And if I were to sit with any one of you and explore your belief systems, there would be so complex, so wonderfully intertwined. As soon as you become a part of a group like this, and if you are not careful, if your language is devolving, all of those complexities will go away and you will be brought down to a common denominator, right? To the, it, it, you will be brought down to the common denominator. Now, whichever is that common denominator, you don't know. You don't know which one of these people in the group has the common denominator, but everything will be brought down to that level because that is the only way you can communicate. And then that unit will act according to that common denominator, right? And usually what happens is in evolution, individual human beings are much more evolved than groups. Because the way that group, a group thinks is more primitive than the way that an individual human being thinks. Another way to look at this is communication between constituent items. Okay, now this is this might get a little complex, but just hear me out for a second. When you are thinking, if this is you, you are thinking with your brain, right? Now in the brain, there are so many neurons and all these neurons are connected to each other so intricately. So there is information spreading across your brain in such an intricate way. So there is information that is being exchanged so beautifully. This is what leads to complexity of thought. This is what leads to you being such a wonderfully complex person because your neurons are talking to each other in such a complicated way and we are not able to fully understand it. In a group, the constituent items are not your neurons. In a group, the constituent items are the human beings. And the communication between human beings are still not as good as the communication between the neurons. Which is why till now a group can never perform in as complicated a way as a human being can. Right? That is not to say that it, is, it will not happen because just like how we evolved from lower animals so too will groups keep evolving. So in an amoeba, so when evolution started, let's look at an amoeba. In amoeba, there is no centralized thought process. There's no centralized decision making because there is no brain, okay? There is no brain in an amoeba what it instead has is just nerves going everywhere and the nerves are all connected to each other and this is something called as neural mesh neural mesh just a net of nerves connected to each other taking in information right the fundamental role of the nervous system is it takes in information from the environment and it has some output so the amoeba can sense that there is food outside it can extend its uh, hands take out take in food 
uh, digest the food, put it out, all that it is able to do. It is able to interact with the environment, take in information and put out output. But there is no centralized brain. There is nothing in the center calculating everything. So, sab apne apne jaga pe kaam kar rahe. And in the neural mesh, there is some vague exchange of information so that all parts of the amoeba knows somehow whatever is happening, but there is no constant logic. Reconnection successful. Uh, okay, I think my OBS just uh, buffer. My OBS is buffering. I hope I'm back. I hope I'm back. Guys, am I back? Tell me. Yeah, back. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, this neural mesh, a, just a bunch of neurons talking to each other, but no centralized brain, is what I had said at the start. Uh, when I talked about groups that in a group if there is a centralized brain if there is centralized thinking then we are talking of a government we are talking of corporates but if there is no centralized thinking then we are talking of mobs and the amoeba in that evolutionary tree where did the amoeba come in the evolutionary tree, if humans are here, amoeba came right at the start. It was a unicellular organism. Right? It was a unicellular organism. One cell just acting on its own. So just one cell. Gradually as evolution progressed, that one cell learned to coexist with other cells. And it became multicellular. And the reason it became multicellular is because the individual cells learn to communicate with each other. Then those multicellular organisms became uh, even more complex, even more complex. And then finally you had, uh, you know, reptiles and so on. So even in evolution, it has been a story of increasing complexity of communication. So evolution is a story of increasing complexity of communication. And today, an individual human being can be compared to an amoeba. It has come full circle. An individual human being can now be compared to an amoeba. And a group can be compared to a multicellular organism. And the more the group learns to communicate with each other, the more evolution can go forward. Right? So this was a slightly complicated concept, but I hope that um, I hope that you're all on the same page. Tell me if you're uh, you know following if there's anything else I should explain in this idea. Also, in the meantime, I hope you've all liked the Sunkar Maza. <laughs> Uh, no faculty in a medical college taught as well as you. Oh, thank you, Aditya. I hope you've all liked uh, the video. I hope that we are all subscribed to it. Um, I hope that you are sharing the uh, videos with your friends. 2021 is the year when uh, I want to give maximum time to this channel. And I hope that we can form sort of like a community where we discuss things that is not easy to discuss. We discuss things that are not commonly talked about in other groups, in other YouTube channels. Um, I want to create something like that. And it's not going to be easy because I'm not sure how many people would like this. I'm not sure how many people would want to be a part of this conversation. So probably out of every 10 people that you share this information with, one will be interested. And it is that one person that I want. It is that one person that I want on the chat uh, participating in the conversation um, because I think it's it's um, it'll be great if that happens you know because exactly like how I said we are all individual amoeba and we want to connect 
to others who are thinking like this right so for that you have to spread out the net you have to get people on and i i genuinely think that out of 10 people probably only one would be interested in being a part of this conversation which is absolutely fine huh. okay we have just uh, one more topic said you're on the right track i want the noob and smart noob if you do another stream with him another stream with tanmay oh yeah so uh doing a stream with tanmay actually is complicated there is so much of uh, work issues going on with him but uh, let's see i i would i would really like it if um, we can just do something on our own you know i uh without depending too much on anyone because uh, this is just better of course we we will keep collaborating we will keep having amazing people on this channel and we'll keep discovering new folks to have conversations with uh, but i would love it if it could be just us just us talking and sharing ideas all right now uh let's get to that last part it's 10 it's 1025 self built exactly no mob mentality came for neuroscience of mal <laughs> yeah neuroscience of mal was fun yeah that was a fun fun oh sukriti grower raid okay is sukriti streaming hang on so then can you all go and say hi to her as well indian sam harris just go to sukriti's channel and just say hi just say you know sid says hi or something uh sukriti is damn fun to uh chat with i just did a podcast with her and it was super fun neuroscience of porn or right, i can talk about that wait is sukriti still streaming i can't see uh i don't know can you can you guys go and check someone share uh, someone share sukriti's um, live stream if it's going on can you share the link and can you just go and say hi i've never raided anyone before that's be damn fun <laughs> sukriti raid thanks guys thank you all for coming in we are talking of neuroscience of mob mentality over here yeah she's streaming so uh, uh valdi can you just share the link for sukriti's stream and just go and say hi to her she's damn sweet like that okay excellent excellent all right go say hi guys just go and say hi go say sid says hi <laughs> all right already on it lovely we are on to the last part all right we are on to the last part um uh can you do neuroscience of positivity that that's a lovely topic neuroscience of positivity is a lovely topic I write my own blogs on science and the universe. Just a newbie, would you mind checking it out? Okay, that's so cool. Uh, can you put it in the? Don't put it over here. Uh, put it in the comments below the video, and I'll go check it out later. Uh, I watched your dark matter conversation and been watching since Mohammed. Thank you so much. That was that was so cool. Jack Ma saying Sukriti she's Sukriti says she has a crush on you. That is so sweet. Sukriti has a way of. Um, saying things that uh, you don't you're not very sure what to reply to the podcast was really interesting because of that because i had no idea how to reply to some of her questions <laughs> oh man all right last topic last part what i last what is the last part damn it sukriti is distracting me now focus neuroscience That's what we are talking about, guys. We are talking about neuroscience. Say thank you, thank you, Sukriti. That was such a lovely thing to say. <laughs> neuroscience on porn addiction, addiction different levels. When are you doing the Gita lessons again? Neuroscience of smoking. Okay. Back to neuroscience of mob mentality. What happens in the brain? when we are so evolved we are so 
complex we are so capable of thinking these incredible thoughts for some reason it all goes down the drain suddenly something happens and everything is just gone in a mob what happens how does it all go away have you seen the recent videos uh, in the US capital uh, wait Gautam Menon said you are my absolute favorite youtuber thank you for your streams thank you Gautam that is so sweet immortal talks all right how many relationships have you had what a weird question to ask on a live stream 100k subscribers and we'll talk about relationships that was the deal that was the deal with my sub subs 100k subscribers and we'll talk about relationships and yeah I'll answer questions no worries I'll answer questions so yeah so what happened at the US Capitol that was a mob they were uh, and at the start it just seemed like a bunch of angry people busting doors and now more and more as more information is coming out apparently they were going to hang the vice president they were thinking of yeah a, insane insane stuff happening and nothing new throughout history this the idea of lynching or the idea of uh, mob violence has been has been happening so many many times that it is almost expected this is who we are this is what human behavior is and that is not to say that that is all that we can be because we know that is not true we can be so much more but this is our primal level this is our animal level and what is that one person died two uh, no five people died Mohammed. five people died one cop died uh, so yeah <clears throat> uh, why does that happen so let's let's just look at it a little bit let us let us say that you are a very complex person as we said all these different neurons and you know that there are different areas so you know that there is something called as the frontal lobe uh, which has something called as prefrontal cortex which is where all your logic your rational thinking your personality all of that is there in your prefrontal cortex uh, there's something called parietal lobe which helps you uh, figure out what is there around you something called as occipital lobe which uh, tells you what you are seeing and your temporal lobe which has your uh, the temporal lobe which has your limbic system that controls your emotions right now so many neurons talking to each other the sum product of all this complexity will end up with you all this complexity ending up with you having one particular opinion on a particular topic right you have an opinion because of everything all the things that are happening in your brain at the end of it you will have an opinion let us draw that opinion as an arrow okay so this is your opinion you have an opinion now there are many other people there are okay one second why can't I change this hold on mm. yeah now there are other people right all these people also have their own brains and all these people will also have their own opinions now in a world where everybody has their own thought and everybody is thinking their own thing your opinion is going to be just one of them so one person likes to eat pasta one person likes to eat bread one person likes to eat pav bhaji one person likes to eat uh, chole bhature you like to eat chinese fine it's cool everybody has their own thing 
and your opinion is just one of them you are living your own world say at a bus stop or a railway station everybody is going to their own journey your journey is not going to be determined by what some where somebody else is going the difference between this and the mob is what happens if everybody else's opinion is oriented in a particular direction and you are the only person with an opinion like this think about that situation everybody else is thinking about a particular thing that can be anything okay it can be anything but if everybody else is thinking about let's say something as simple as drinking tea if there are 15 people and if somebody were to ask the first person what will you have tea 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 tea, tea. and one person wants to have coffee and that only one person has an opinion that is not in keeping with everybody else that person will feel a slight sense of saying something extraordinary that i am the only person thinking coffee now this is such a innocent example that uh, you might think that there's nothing much to it but increase the pressure a little bit say that they are only going to make tea and just for you that person will now have to make coffee and this is not a hotel this is in somebody's house suddenly the pressure increases now even if you wanted coffee what are the chances that you will say i don't want anything or even more likely i'll also have tea what are the chances increase the pressure even more what if your family doesn't really approve of coffee what if your family thinks that coffee is bad for you and everybody is drinking tea and in front of your entire family you have to now say uh, i'm going against you i'm having coffee it is going to inconvenience you and I know that you don't like it but I will still have coffee. Now what are the odds of you having coffee versus nay nay I'll also have tea. Right? So this this thing this going against the group is a conflict. And this is so important that your brain has an entire area dedicated just to detect conflict so this is called as conflict uh, detection and right behind your prefrontal cortex between your prefrontal cortex and your limbic system is an area called as the cingulate cortex i may have mentioned this a couple of times before but this is very important cingulate cortex and the anterior part of the cingulate cortex is called as the anterior cingulate cortex or acc now the acc is very closely connected to your prefrontal cortex and especially the part of the prefrontal cortex that deals with social and personal identity and norms so there is a part of your prefrontal cortex that is dedicated to understanding who you are and understanding 
where you are what is your society like and what is expected of you so what are the social expectations from you and whenever there is a conflict between these two things when your social identity and your personal identity ke beech mein kuch bhi conflict hota hai so your acc rings an alarm which reminds me all of you have to press the bell icon okay all of you have to press that bell icon uh, because it apparently does a great deal of help to the channel so everybody press the bell icon and i am really proud of that transition but okay i didn't plan that one now your anterior cingulate cortex rings the alarm and what that alarm basically sounds like is error it detects an error your anterior cingulate cortex gives a warning that there is a conflict between what you are doing and what is socially expected of you and you know going back all the way to the tribe and i told you what happens when there is a conflict between you and your tribe the whole idea is you could get kicked out and the that fundamental fear has been ingrained in your anterior cingulate cortex so why is this so important why is so error hai to kya hua personal or social conflict hua to kya hua the worry is they may kick you out and so the anterior cingulate cortex tells everyone it doesn't keep this information to itself it tells everyone most importantly it tells the big guy it tells the limbic system ki dekh 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 bhai look what this guy is doing he is not conforming to social norms he is going to get kicked out you take care of this now the limbic system contains an area called amygdala the amygdala feels threatened the amygdala is thinking god damn it you had one role you had one job to do just stay in the tribe how is that so difficult just stay in the tribe don't do you want to kill us what is wrong with you stay in the tribe don't think so much stay in the tribe this is what is safe for you stay in the tribe and so your amygdala tells your prefrontal cortex shut up don't think do what i'm saying your prefrontal cortex says okay i'm sorry i will have tea your limbic system says good boy here is some dopamine and you are happy right and this dopamine goes all the way back to your prefrontal cortex and makes it makes that decision easier so that next time you have a choice of tea versus coffee you already know what to do you already know what choice to make because anything to avoid waking up this guy we don't want that we don't want to go through that amygdala again for god's sake last time itna drama hua this time i don't even want to wake him up nahi bhai i'll have tea i'll have tea don't worry please don't wake up amygdala right so this is roughly what happens uh, when you are conforming this is the neuroscience of conforming this is what you, what what you do when you conform to uh, the social norms um what happens if you don't so everybody is having tea everybody is having tea right and you are here all this for a cup of tea <laughs> amygdala sounding like my mom <laughs> what if you don't conform right a uh, couple of things one your amygdala is threatened it will remain threatened until it is sure that 
oh they are not going to kick you out so until you do it you don't know so will your family really kick you out for having coffee if they do then your amygdala was right if they don't then your amygdala was overreacting because everything is retrospective until you know the consequences you are not sure are you overthinking or underthinking so one option is that your amygdala calms the fuck down amygdala relaxes right so chill chill you can have coffee you can have tea bro it's all okay no worries the other thing is you might get removed from the group or you might remove yourself from the group because you don't like this amygdala you don't like this amygdala activation you are threatened everybody is looking at you expecting you to have tea you don't want to have tea you want coffee i will walk out from here i will leave this place remove self from and remember you are not just removing yourself from that room you are removing yourself from that tribe so you remove yourself from the tribe now what you are you are alone alone is great nobody is threatening you uh, i mean nobody is making you conform to any social norms you are on your own but what about safety you are not safe anymore you are now out in the jungle you are outside of the safety that your tribe was giving you so then what you do is you look for other tribes so you look for people who are also drinking coffee and then you just slot right in right so now you are with other coffee drinkers uh you feel you feel seen you feel validated you feel accepted you feel that um, now you are where you belong you feel that sense of belonging all of this for coffee sure but all of this also for religion all of this also for political beliefs all of this also for gun rights all of this also for everything everything uh, follows this uh, sort of a uh, parameter of um uh, progress there is another way of dealing with this which is both you and your family members all decide to calm your amig calm your respective amygdalas so just as you were threatened your family members were also threatened your family members amygdala is also threatened that why is this one member of the family going against everyone so their amygdala is also threatened they are also thinking let's remove this person or should we keep this person so the idea is that if your amygdala is not threatened that much what happens is now let's go back to the brain if your amygdala is less threatened next time your anterior cingulate cortex will detect less error so the first time you have coffee and everybody is having tea your amygdala is just thinking oh my god oh my god oh my god what will happen nothing happens the next time less so next time less so after five times you're ordering coffee like it's your uh, you're born to order coffee so your anterior cingulate cortex stops detecting this as an error and so what this basically does is you are you can put it as agree to disagree which is a great thing 
or you can put it as live and let live. Aditi Patel, thank you so much. Aditi always sends a nice super chat and I have to thank you. That's really nice. Uh, how can a mob mentality lead to irrational beliefs such as conspiracy theories? I recently read about the thing Republicans believe in like Democrats are child eating reptiles why PFC is turned off. <laughs> oh man, I've, I've heard about this. Um, all the Clinton rumors, um, the Bill Gates rumors, vaccine being a way to control your mind, all sorts of ridiculous things. And uh, I, I think that takes a separate discussion on how we can believe anything once. Uh, we'll actually get to that. We'll actually get to that. We will be touching upon it. Um, <laughs> It's crazy when you hear about it sitting outside because you are thinking with your prefrontal cortex, but in there, when you are part of that group, you are not thinking with your prefrontal cortex, you're thinking with your limbic. And so it's, um, yeah, it's a whole, whole new world uh, when you're thinking with your limbic. Now I, I told you how your amygdala gives you dopamine as a sort of a reward for solving this error right that reward was just for solving this error uh, you have resolved this conflict you have confirmed great here's some dopamine but that's not enough it's not enough to just reward somebody when they make a mistake and correct it you need to reward someone when they don't make a mistake at all, right? This is uh, team management one on 101. You don't wait for somebody to detect an error, correct it, to gift some, gift them something. What, what about those people who have been working as a team all along? So dopamine is great, but you also need oxytocin. Oxytocin is what gives you that sense of bliss and belonging. So when you belong to a team, when you belong to a family, when you belong to, um, when you have a child and you feel that sense of belonging with the child, even when you get a dog and you feel that sense of belonging, that pleasure that you get is because of oxytocin and oxytocin is what is going to constantly gives you give you that sense of I want to stay here I want to work together I want to cooperate I want to coordinate and this is a very strong feeling and this is a feeling that you see everywhere from corporate culture so uh, companies will say we are Ferrari people, we work in Ferrari, we are, uh, a, a startup will say that, a startup will try to inculcate that sense of we are all together, politicians will do that, my, polit my uh, uh, people who follow my political views should have that sense of coming together. Football clubs, Man United, Red Devils, we are Red Devils, you will f face paint yourself, you will make tattoos that sense of belonging is universal forget everything youtube live streams their sense of community so all all of you guys chatting together and being a part of this conversation somewhere you get that sense of community you get that sense of oh we are all participating in this exercise together we have a joint sense of purpose there is oxytocin in your brain if I want to, or if you want to, how do you increase the oxytocin? How do you increase this feeling of pleasure that you get from being part of this group? You increase your identity. So more identity, more shared identity, more oxytocin. And the more you work towards increasing their identity, more oxytocin. We should name the community. From a neuroscience perspective, it is 
very important to name the community when you when we talk about ourselves when we discuss neuroscience when we discuss these life principles when we discuss human behavior what do we think about ourselves are we just a random group of individuals or is there a shared identity that we have and one of the first things about shared identity is naming your community when i think about all the what was pewdiepie's community called um 19 year olds 9 year olds something tanmay bot army susha squad all of these now when i think about it every community has a name and uh, the reason for that is shared identity oxytocin going up name karan kar do i was actually thinking about this just now before the stream 9 year olds is now is 19 year olds all right i was so i thought that you guys should name it uh i don't i didn't particularly want um so sids place is the uh, discord community sids army uh, seemed mm, yeah pfc pfc army sounded much more uh, fun but i'll tell you what and i'm going to be very frank with you i have a sense of conflict because while community is great i am also very 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 pro individual identity individual identity i feel is uh, hugely important and uh, there has to be some way of every single one of you figuring out who you are and at the same time figuring out that you are part of a community so these two things are in, uh, are tricky and usually most companies most groups don't really think about individual identity much but um, yeah from a personal just from a personal sense i feel that is very very important in the gang individuals will not we don't have a name bro you need to speak a little fast <laughs> okay why where do you have to go intriguing right oh uh, keep it sidzami keep it sidzami and uh, we can always have uh, different names at different uh, times but because it's sid's place at yeah i think that that can be that can be a simple thing to remember but spread the word of pfc the there's no reason to hurry oh i have to link it up god damn uh can someone say, share the link of that song i want to put it up in the description said hard warriors all right now i think we're almost almost done the the last part of this is the dark side of the dark side of mob mentality i kept this for the end just so that um, you know you we have an idea of how we got till here but whenever you talk about mobs you don't think of anything positive you never think of something positive you always think about something that has gone wrong something violent something dark and the reason is that mob violence has been predominant in our human history why does this happen why does it uh, why does it happen so frequently we are back to us and them individual people probably wonderful people people that you know and respect but in a group in a mob because of breakdown of communication between the group members one and even more importantly between the groups uh aditi patel again thank you for the super chat this is exceedingly sweet can individuals be very self dependent uh, like how yogis who live alone 
ஐ டோன்ட் ஃபீல் லைக் பிலாங்கிங் எனி வேர் ஐம் ஐ ஆன்டி சோஷியல் ஸோ அதித்தி டுடே த வேர்ல்ட் இஸ் சேஞ்ச் ஸோ மச் தேட் த ட்ரெடிஷ்னல் வேஸ் ஆஃப் பிலாங்கிங் ஹேஸ் நவ் இவால்வ்ட் வி ஆர் நவ் வி ஃபைண்ட் ஆர் செல்ஸ் பிலாங்கிங் டு uh we find ourselves belonging to uh groups like this groups on youtube uh, we find ourselves belonging to groups on social media and it is still in our heads right uh anukriti oh anukriti is here i'm so used to watching streams on 2x that watching it live is making me wonder why i'm thinking so slowly <laughs> yeah so when i'm when i'm teaching i always uh, speak a little bit more slowly because i want to make sure that uh you know my thoughts are arranged in sequence i don't want it to be haphazard and it's not like i make a ppt or something before so i have to basically think about it when i say it but when uh, yeah i think when when you watch these videos later please watch it in 2x i watch it in 2x when i want to see something specific so yeah aditi op that's <laughs> that's so sweet all right so basically what happens is there is something called as othering and this goes back to this uh, breaking down of language breaking down of communication and binary so it all comes down to binary that are you with us or are you with them and this is called as othering and what othering does is now anybody who is outside of this group is no longer us it is no longer they are not even part of us in any way to the extent that whatever we are they are not that so if you say that we are um uh, we are man united fans then the other group is not man united fans obviously but what else are we we are good people right we identify ourselves as good people so automatically that would mean that they are not man united fans and they are not good people what else are we we are uh human beings right so if we are human beings that would mean that they are not and this is the extent to which othering works so othering starts off as just you and i don't agree on one thing you and i don't agree on which football team to support but as you go on othering as you go on pushing and bringing your own team closer and closer and closer you are actually othering them from all your identities you cannot say that sure i like manuel you like chelsea but hey we are all good people we all have good friends we all work in the same place no if you are othering you are completely othered and as you go on othering eventually you have things like they are animals and this is something that you will see in different conversations across the spectrum you will see this in conversations on race one one uh, one race saying that other races just animals they don't deserve rights they don't deserve anything they are animals you will see this in caste you will say that one caste that they are animals you will see this in religion those really that religion people they are animals you are what you are actually doing is you are othering them in every sense you are dehumanizing them because it is logical you are human so obviously they cannot be they are othered and this is the power of mob thinking this is the power of uh, how <clears throat> this is the power of how we can create a reality of us and them that uh, is so powerful that we have no problems now in killing them in hurting them because why should you feel bad you are not killing a human being you are not killing a good person you will have trouble killing a chelsea fan if you are a man united fan and somebody is a chelsea fan you will have trouble killing them but 
killing a bad person it's more acceptable killing an animal even more acceptable killing a bad animal even more acceptable so you are actually making it easier and easier for you to behave like an animal so you are not actually making the other person an animal you are actually justifying your own animal behavior which is a very inverse way of behaving but that is what happens and uh, yeah why what, what is the difference between just you as a single human being who would never do this just you as in isolation may, uh, let's just say the chances of you doing this on your own are very very less but as soon as you are put in a crowd of people who all think similarly right so now all your uh, viewpoints are aligned all of you think in a similar direction now suddenly this is acceptable you can call somebody an animal you can kill them you can hang them you can lynch them and suddenly it's acceptable whereas just for you it would have been toba toba main aisa nahi hu main to acche ghar ka hu i am from a good family i have good morals i am a teacher i am a i am a police officer i am a uh, i am a husband i am a father all of these people would have great morals just by themselves but in a group that's not the case why where the, another way to question it is where do the morals go and i read a very shocking story about somebody who survived a lynching a black person and he was talking about how he was surrounded by people that he has grown up with he is surrounded by people that he has helped throughout the years people whose house he has gone to uh, some of them were his teachers some of them were his classmates uh, he has mowed the garden of some of the people who are now standing there trying to kill him and this was part of a lynching and uh, the idea of how that can happen how can somebody you uh, somebody you've known and trusted suddenly turn against you this is what happens that in that group uh, oh i have to say this aditi welcome uh, welcome to our small community uh, i'm thinking of creating another like a lowest rung uh, membership uh, team membership uh, level we'll call it uh, i mean i know medical students is right now the cheapest one but then i want to create something even lesser just for this community building just so that people who want to be part of it don't want to spend too much that is completely acceptable but uh, i'll probably do that Tell, let me know if you guys are interested uh, maybe like 20 bucks or something 20 30 bucks or something but uh, yeah just so that everybody can be part of that group chat and i can have members only streams then because that will be kind of interesting all right where do the morals go and as somebody just said crowd provides us with anonymity it's a it cannot be overstated how important this aspect is how important anonymity is because as one person you are mr so and so living in so and so and you have your identity you have a sense of uh, this is who i am but as a group what is your identity as a man united fan what is your identity as a congress supporter or a bjp supporter what is your identity what is it how does it come down to you specifically you don't have an identity there you are anonymous even more so in social media 
but social media is a different discussion but even more so in social media there is no accountability nobody knows who you are you are anonymous and there has been plenty of studies done on this school teachers there have been studies on this that if a school teacher is given a option of pressing a button and uh, a student gets a small electric shock they will not press it too long if it's just them by themselves alone in the room but if you put 10 school teachers in a line and say that any of you can press it the student will not know who has pressed it it turns out that people press it for much longer and they feel much less guilt at it later so the idea of causing pain the idea of being violent uh, the idea of hurting somebody is only a problem because you have your identity it's not that you don't want to it's because you don't believe you should but if that you is taken out of the picture and now it's not just you you can do whatever you want uh, it turns out that people are much more open to violence if there is anonymity if it is in the dark so darkness increases uh, violence if it is for someone else he told me to do it is a great he or she told me to do it is a great way of justifying that um, um, I can be I can be violent now so most of the people in Hitler's army uh, later on said that I was just following orders I'm not evil I didn't want to kill those people but I'm just following orders what's wrong with that I what do you want me to do I'm a soldier I'm just following orders so the idea of killing or cheating for someone else is much easier than saying that I am doing this because I am that person accepting responsibility is difficult if you are wearing a mask or a hood now if you've heard of uh, the Ku Klux Klan the KKK they all wear those white they used to wear those white hoods and uh, anonymity again just that sense of behind this hood it could be anyone and that gives them an opportunity to do whatever they want and inversely and this is even more interesting even if you are not doing the violence what if you are a if you are standing by what if you are walking down the road it's just you and you see a couple of people uh, misbehaving with someone and it's just you alone here the idea of your personality comes in what is uh, who are you what kind of things do you believe in are you somebody who protects somebody who needs help are you somebody who's been brought up to help other people all that will come in but what if there is a lynching going on in front of you and you are not doing it you are not being violent but you are just standing and next to you there are 10 more people and all of you are just watching here what is the responsibility on you to do something because there are plenty of ways in which you can justify not doing something because why isn't this person doing anything why isn't this person doing anything and this person is thinking why isn't this person doing anything why isn't this person doing anything and so too often than not we have situations where there are actually more people standing by than people in the mob so the people who are actually doing the violent act are lesser than the onlookers but because the onlookers are not communicating the onlookers don't have a unit they are all in their own 
space none of them will act and so the violent team gets a free reign and more than a free reign they are even getting social permission because society is watching and not stopping me so if i'm doing something violent and there are a lot of people watching and none of them are saying anything to my mind it is a way of approval it's a way of silent approval that ha theek hai go ahead so this is uh the second thing that happens because of anonymity because even as a stander uh, even as somebody who's standing by you have anonymity if you are in a group so a mob works both ways mob works to increase violence mob works to reduce opposition to violence the second thing that happens is there is a decreased sense of personal responsibility and the third thing that happens is there is reduced sense of right and wrong now personal responsibility i think we've already covered but decrease sense of right and wrong goes back to the brain one more time in evolution your limbic system doesn't really have a concept of right and wrong the limbic system only knows about survival whatever is good for survival do it whatever is not good for survival don't do it right and it has created this elaborate system of dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin so that you will do a lot of things for survival what happened recently is your prefrontal cortex created this whole social system of morals things that you are supposed to do things you are not supposed to do and of course in a way it is an extension of survival we'll get to that later or, or in a dif different discussion but for now we talk about how you should behave you sh uh, your own sense of personal uh, right and wrong and this is unfortunately coded in the prefrontal cortex so this is in your pfc and one thing that has been noted and there were actually functional mri studies that have done this is that as soon as an individual goes from individual to a mob uh one thing i told you was you devolve so you go backwards in evolution and in the brain that going backwards in evolution looks something like you go from your prefrontal cortex towards your limbic so now whatever is happening in your prefrontal cortex is now happening much lesser because your prefrontal cortex has evolved much more recently so now your morals are gone how you should behave is gone and uh, your sense of right and wrong is gone and you are literally going from evolved human beings to less evolved animals as a mob as part of the mob every single person is behaving as a lesser evolved animal and the small amount of prefrontal cortex that is still active so your prefrontal cortex can sometimes just say uh why you know what are you doing why are you doing this that small amount of questioning that comes the answer is usually always for the greater good this is usually the justification that um you are behaving like an animal you know you are behaving like an animal but trust me it is for the greater good uh it is so that we are all going to improve we are all going to be better for this so all this violence is going to be worth it it is for the greater good and once you are less evolved once you are in this state one of the things about lesser evolution is that your identity becomes binary so 
remember i told you that you are all complex people with so many different thoughts and so many different personality traits all of that goes away when you devolve from your prefrontal cortex to your limbic and now suddenly your entire identity is defined by a word one word it could be your religion it could be your football club it could be um your caste everything it comes down to one word you can you can describe your entire personality with one word like somebody said in the chat bhakt liberal so you are a liberal I, i identify as a liberal matlab that's it my full complex personality brought down boiled down to one word which is liberal or bhakt or hindu or muslim or christian or uh it, it doesn't even have to be a word it could even be a hat it could be a maga hat for example one thing you wear it could be a symbol it could be the nazi emblem it could be anything but it's one thing you bring your wonderfully complex human personality down to one single thing and that is devolution basically it is the opposite of the dev- evolution evolution has progressed to make us wonderfully complex and devolution happens when you remove everything and you bring everything down to a simple yes no question a simple choice and in a way you can think of this as an on off switch and think about this if you are a politician what is easier to handle a group of very very complex rational thinking people who will question everything uh why 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 or is it easier to handle a group of people who are all aligned exactly in one direction and who all have a single one off switch on off switch everything is everything is binary there's no complexity it's all binary you keep attention focused on binary questions and everything is easier to handle because complex human beings are very difficult anybody who has been in a relationship knows that dealing with a complex human being is very difficult we are much more comfortable when it is binary and it is very simple so uh being a politician is actually like being in a relationship with the whole country because every person has an expectation from you and you have an expectation from them so that is very difficult bring it down bring it down to the least common denominator which is mob so when you bring anybody down to a least common denominator you are actually making them a mob as opposed to looking at each individual person and seeing the complexity there is in each individual person that is much more complicated itna time kisko hai let us make everybody into a mob and uh, everything is much easier to handle we have spoken about we spoke about race we spoke about caste we spoke about religion we spoke about politics all of them have mobs one last thing i want to say is patriarchy and this is probably the biggest mob of all um in a very in a much more subtle way but if you look at gender if you look at men and women right uh and there are other genders but the the discussion on patriarchy predominantly revolves around men and women and the idea of how an individual person so an individual man behaving in a certain particular way with his morals his beliefs how he believes women should be treated how he believes um 
about equality and respect and consent and all of those things versus a mob right um, it's very different so men behave differently when they are with other men when they are just talking as a group and this is something that um, it even has a term I think it's called locker room talk and in a very fundamental way this is what happens that when boys are sitting with boys or f for the other matter girls sitting with girls but predominantly we are talking about this uh, boys sitting with boys the way they talk about women are different it is it is uh, different from the way that a boy would talk to a girl one on one and the reason that I'm bringing this in is because I feel that in the future we will be having a discussion on patriarchy we will be talking about this topic more we will be talking about how men behave with women more the reason that we haven't spoken about it till now is because I feel that uh, we don't know enough I don't know enough and there is still so much to still think about but mob mentality is definitely one aspect of patriarchy power is another aspect of patriarchy there are many different things but we will be discussing this for sure like the boys locker room incident that happened yeah I heard about that I'm, I'm not really sure um, you know how how it went later I just heard about it when it first broke but uh, yeah that was pretty shocking <coughs> uh, how's future gonna be Navneet Pandey uh, can I ask you to uh, have a look at my uh, sexuality videos I have released six videos on sexuality and I think um, that will clear up some of your questions okay I think that wraps it up for today that is the neuroscience of mob mentality I hope that you all um, yeah I hope that you all enjoyed it I hope that you all uh, found it interesting uh, I will be making a separate membership be a membership channel membership uh, level at the cheapest possible rate just so that everybody can be a part of it and uh, I hope that you all join and I hope that you all um, share this video and yeah let's get the community going all right uh aditi patil please get aranya for discussing this on a stream that is actually a very good idea i will discuss it with her thank you guys this was super fun i enjoyed talking about it we'll we'll uh, we'll see what to talk about next uh, next week but every monday every monday there'll be a neuroscience talk okay let's get the let's get the viewing count also up uh, let's get more people who are interested in conversations like this to watch it live because it's great to see the conversation with the chat uh, Aditi thank you for all the super chats you were very sweet welcome to the uh, membership and I'll see you all soon join the discord community have uh, I think all these guys are part of it and the conversation can continue there I'll see you all soon bye good night <laughs>